We just worked our knee slide off the whistle, both to a stand up and to uh, what I would probably term as a changeover. Um, now we're gonna hit what everyone else would think of as a conventional sit out. I like to call it a sit in um, and I'll explain why. On a sit out off the whistle, most of the times we're stepping out and now we're gonna sit out. Notice very distinctly when I sat out, there was no pressure on him. Okay, he can continue to keep pressure on me. I got my legs out, but now I'm continuing to weather the storm of him trying to drive me forward and beat me up from the top. On a sit in, I want to drive the weight off me. So off the whistle, okay, he's mostly going to bump forward and chop. I'm immediately going to sit, hold on, I'm going to sit over that foot, just like we did on the, on the knee side. I'm going to sit over that foot and my, when I, once, as soon as I can dig that tread of my shoe into the mat, I'm going to drive back into him right there. Okay. Could be considered a changeover. Could call it a sit out. I like to call it a sit in. So whistle start. My opponent covers me. Okay. He gives me three taps right away. Coming in now from here, as soon as my leg came up, I start, I'm going to drive into him. I'm going to drive back into him and I'm going to change all the way to my far hip. What this does and the reason that this is so effective is because instead of reacting to his pressure on top, I'm making him react to mine. Now from here, I don't have to necessarily be an explosive wrestler. I'm personally not a, an extremely explosive wrestler, but I do have to be very deliberate and I cannot wait for what he does off the whistle. This is a quick action off the whistle. I'm driving in right away. I'm not waiting to see how he's gonna pressure me or what moves he's gonna do off the whistle. I'm going straight to the sit-in as soon as the whistle blows. So he's on me. He gives me three taps. I'm sitting in hard. When I go, I sat. He was on my left side. I sat towards my left hip. I end up on my right hip. I end up on my right hip and my right foot is tucked underneath. From here, he's hanging on tight. I'm starting to pinch elbows immediately. One thing that people um, become fearful of or are a little adverse to is pinching elbows when they already have elbow position. Well, pinching elbows isn't gonna do anything. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm keeping him from extending his grip further in when I pinch. So I pinch, now him to get to my wrist right now, he may be able to force his way to my wrist, but it's not fast. It gives me time to react and it subdues him from taking really good holds on me. Okay, he may even be grabbing an uh, underhook. He may be grabbing an underhook, pinching right there. This takes away the grip. I can feel it going away when I pinch. Okay, because I'm wedging this forearm tighter, it's hard. Just here, just hand fighting, that's not enough. And we notice that the higher levels we get to, um, at a young age, you know, we can get away with this because again, the techniques aren't um, properly developed yet. They're not at, at the level of, say, a high school or college athletes. Um, or in here, he's grabbing a hold of me tight, I'm grabbing back a hold of him. I don't need hands. Right here, he can feel this. What I'm using is my lat muscle, my back muscle, okay? I'm pinching and then I'm thinking about my elbows driving into my ribs right here tight. And I'm squeezing my chest and my core. Everything's tight like we talked about. Now from here, I'm going to just shovel off, shovel off, elbows stay in. Now I'm going to slide my hips away and I'm going to drive my right, right at the base of my neck and my shoulders into him. Now I'm out. Okay, I'm simply cutting through as he's driving into me. Cutting through, re-attack it. Going again, we'll go from the, the front position. Okay, right here, whistle blows. I immediately am shifting my weight into my opponent. Shifting my weight into him, notice him, him move. 
Okay, notice him move, shifting my weight in. Now I'm gonna drive using that outside foot. I'm gonna drive straight in. My foot, watch, this is where a lot of people make a mistake, is they wanna do this, because they learn to sit out. Pressure just let off of him. Okay. I'm not sitting out at all, and that's why I call it a sit-in. I'm driving until I sit to my butt. This foot never moved, it stayed there the whole time. I drove off. Now from here, again, elbows pinch, heads up, strong shoulders into him, and I'm gonna shovel. I call it shoveling it off, just plow, elbow in. And remember our elbows, when we come in, are scraping along our own rib cage. Scraping along my own rib cage right here. I stay, I have to stay tight. I stay tight, now, He's, again, he's leaning this way. So as he drives in, I may shift. Notice my shoulder. See how high his shoulder is? My shoulder's below. Very, very hard for him to combat this. I don't even have to have an expert level of hip heist. I can simply turn that way at a high rate of speed, and it's hard for him to chase. I'm turning down. Wrestle him back into my opponent. One last time, a little, little higher pace. We'll go from the side angle. Okay, I'm right here. Drive the neck. Post, close to my body. Knees, or sorry, hands want to stay in front of my butt. If I lean back, as we talked about, I want to be upright. If I lean back, that's trouble. Hands close to my body, so he can't grab my wrists easy. And then I'm pinching my elbows, shoveling. Now I'm sliding, I can scoop. I can shift direction side to side. He continues to drive into me. I can slide the other way. Watch my feet. Okay, he drives in, crawl, turn. Any which way. One side to side, I'm gonna hip heist. I'm gonna use that rotational power, hip heist. Get back into my opponent, looking for my reattacks.